was on February 24th, 2023, at my cosmic birthday party. My friends and I were playing a game. And before I share with you the interesting results, let's play the game together. Listen carefully. I'll be presenting a series of famous scientists' first names. And if you're familiar with them, call out their last name. If not, hear what others say. Are you ready? I couldn't hear that. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Albert. Einstein. Isaac. Newton. Stephen. Hawkins. Thomas. Yes. Mari. Yes. Dorothy. <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> Kalpana. Yeah. So now you might have known how the game went that day. My friends and I realized that we weren't familiar with many of the female scientists. And why is this a problem? Limited inspiration for girls. Yes, girls have limited inspiration when it comes to female role models who can inspire their interest in these fields, as there are few examples of them represented in books, media, and popular culture. But here are the big questions. Why does this inequality even exist? What are the underlying causes of this phenomenon? Why is it so prevalent, and how can we address this issue effectively? I'm Bhavishya, and I'll be addressing these questions with you all today. I'll be discussing four main themes from my personal experience on how barriers exist in the STEM industry. Let's start off with a big one, the lack of role models. 634 individuals have gone to space. Of them, what percentage do you believe were women? A, more than 50%. B, around 30%. Or C, less than 15%. If you chose C, then you're sadly right. According to the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, a mere 11% of the world's astronauts are women, and only 20% of the whole space workforce is comprised of women. It's astonishing, isn't it? But this is not exclusive for the space industry. Research shows that only 28% of the STEM industry as a whole is comprised of women. Kids often look towards role models with whom we can relate ourselves to. It seems that if someone like us can achieve their dreams, then we can too. So you might be wondering, are there any solutions for this, or are things going to stay the way they are? Yes, I'll be addressing the solutions in three parts. What can a student do, what can a parent do, and what can an organization do? Starting off with, what can a student do? I make myself a part of several organizations that provide valuable introductions to individuals in the STEM industry. Whenever I find someone inspiring, I make the effort to connect with them on LinkedIn, Twitter, or to obtain their email address and set up a call with them. I always find it fun to learn about their personal experiences and seek their advice on how I can grow in the STEM industry. So, what can a parent do? Promote self-confidence by exposing children to female mentors. Get them involved in community events that you think they'd enjoy in, and connect to local women's organizations or mentorship programs that can provide additional role models. How about an organization? What can an organization do? Prioritize diversity in promotion practices and hiring to increase all levels of representation and leadership. All right. On to the second theme, the lack of awareness. Ooh, it's a big one. <laughs> For the past four years, I've run over 500 plus online sessions to 300 students around the world about space and STEM. But I've noticed a consistent trend that there are more boys in my camps compared to girls. When we survey the parents, parents of girls seem more hesitant on how to guide their kids in STEM. Unfortunately, because of the parents' self-doubt, opportunities are not even introduced to the kids. So why is this a problem? If awareness isn't created amongst parents and their kids, then the idea of addressing the gender gap in future generations will get shrunk. So how can we address this? Starting off with, what can a student do? Volunteer yourself in anything that interests you. You might fail, but you won't know if you don't try. Programs like Girls Who Code, Black Girls Code, or Million Women Mentors have successfully done their job by inspiring girls into STEM. I'm sure you've heard of one of them. How about a parent? What can a parent do? 
Engage your child into different fields of STEM. Don't stick to simply just one. Buy simple circuits or science experiments. Research shows that 20% more teens engage in something that they find interactive. I'm sure I do. How about an organization? What can an organization do? Change how classes are taught by connecting STEM experiences into girls' lives. Promoting active, hands-on learning by emphasizing STEM is community-oriented and collaborative. On to the third theme, gender stereotypes. Whoa, even the title seems scary. Once, I asked a popular AI chatbot to give me 10 toy suggestions for girls' and boys' birthdays. For boys, I received science kits, rocket ships, and space Legos. For girls, I received Barbies, dream houses, and stuffed animals. Now, don't get me wrong, I loved that type of stuff as a kid. But I also loved space Legos and science kits. So why does AI exhibit such bias? It doesn't have a mind of its own. This is a result of biased information. The programmer who helped the AI in assisting to answer prompts has trained it to reflect on their own self-thought. So since the input information is biased, the output information is biased. Now, why is this a problem? If a widely used AI chatbot used by millions of people every day exhibits such bias, then we need to enforce change as a society. So what change can a student do? Be vocal and assertive when gender stereotypes are encountered. Don't limit your choices based on gender. Build a network of friends, family, and mentors who support your aspirations and who you can support, too. Having a network can deeply affect how you're getting through stereotypes. So, how can a parent help? My mom motivates me by reminding me how exciting my aspirations are and how far I've come in this field. Parents' participation is crucial when it comes to fighting against stereotypes. How about an organization? Prioritize diverse, inclusive, respectful environments with strong, diverse leadership. Encourage mentorship programs and sponsorship networking. Last but not least, the confidence gap. Research from the American Association of University Women shows that female teachers often pass on math anxiety to girls and often grade them harder, contributing to the confidence gap. The myth of the math brain is debunked by research showing that there's no innate cognitive differences between men and women in math. However, more girls are more likely to say that they're less confident in math by the third grade, while more boys are likely to say that they're confident in math by the second grade. It's astonishing, isn't it? So, what can a student do? Seek feedback and definitely take on constructive criticism. Let me tell you a short story. When I was little, and I kind of still do this, I'd create a project or a drawing, and I show it to my mom. My mom's the type of person to say, it's good if it's good, or if it's bad if it's bad. There's no fluff words, there's no saying, it's amazing when I really just drew an apple. I'd show her the drawing, and she'd say, it's all right, but you can improve on this, this, and this. And I'd look at her with utter disbelief. No, I did this perfectly, there's nothing I can do to improve on. I'd sit in my room and i think, why does she hate me? This is what I'm still working on. Use that feedback as a tool for growth and to develop a growth mindset. So how about a parent? How can a parent help? Get your child involved in more small talk groups, communities, and clubs that are about topics they're interested in, but, are, but that are also slightly out of their comfort zone. Last but not least, what can an organization do? Organizations, hmm. Organizations should pair female employees with those lacking confidence, creating a woman in leadership initiative. I think that's what can help for a confidence gap. So we've talked about the four main themes that I've seen from my experience. What can a student, organization, and a parent do? But there's something that affects the early stages of t thoughts and barriers from an early age. What can a school do? As a student, here's what I think schools should incorporate. One of the main things that I look forward to during my school year are field trips. I love going on those mini trips during the school year. Having a trip to the observatory or meeting a STEM worker would be a dream come true. I think that can really ignite the spark and get students excited about STEM. And the second thing, to definitely encourage more projects and competitions during the curriculum. I love that type of fast-paced environment, which is also collaborative and community-oriented. I think that can really boost confidence and create awareness. Science is not a boy's game. It's not a girl's game. It's everyone's game. 
It just depends on how we all play it. The famous Nancy Burbridge quoted, "Hey, Nancy Burbridge, doesn't that sound familiar? Oh yeah, from the game we played. Maybe the next time we play it, the results will change." I'm Bavisha. How are individuals like you and me going to enforce change in society? Thank you.